Can everyone see me and hear me okay online? Uh, can, oh, maybe co-host, you can help me spotlight my video if they cannot see. Let's get started. So today is gonna be our uh, little short, short practice today. Um, and we will look into more breathing and subtle practice Let's begin with a prayer. Shri Gurave Namaha. Shri Gurave Namaha. Shri Gurave Namaha. Ajaryamam Vidaniya. Nava Mani Takarichit Namur Diabutia Sueta Salvadeva Mayogur. Let's open our practice with three Om chanting to honor the tradition and to connect all of our practice and energy. Lawn in Hay. Oh. your intention to give your best. Bring attention to this moment. As you inhale, stomach, ribcage, chest expanding. As you exhale, chest Go down your ribcage, stomach contracting. Pull your good breathing, eyes closed. Remove all the distraction for this practice so that you can really benefit from the practice of body, mind, and soul. Yoga practice take care of not only physical body, also our subtle body, mind, intellect, memory, and so on. So we'll remove any distraction. Uh, request that cell phone should be silent. Now let's begin bringing your sentiment of gratitude and devotion as you inhale, Nirati. Exhale. You can chant divine name in the mind. You can choose any divine name that you resonate with. Set your body, set your mind. And let's begin your practice. Starting our gentle warm-up, Griva Chakrasan. Bring your chin down. Inhale, start rotating. Very slowly, mindfully, from your right to left.
three to five rounds from each side. Inhale halfway, exhale halfway. Very slow. If you have neck issue, you can take it slower or you can skip the rotation, do the movement. From other side. You could do this with your eyes closed, Griva Chakra and Griva Sanchalan. Match with your breathing. And slowly, gently, once you complete, move on to your shoulder. You can rotate your shoulder joints. Joining with your arms, touch your elbow, try to touch the back of your arms, big motion, break up your shoulder joints. Three to five rounds from each side with your own rhythm. Nice. Take your own time and want to complete with your shoulders. You can switch it up the way you're sitting for the balance of your hip. So if you're always putting your right, left, right leg forward now, your left leg forward and exhale forward. Inhale, Kati Chakras. The entire upper body start rotating. Inhale, exhale. Three to five rounds. Include your head. Feel the whole stretch on your hip, waist, neck, jaw, throat. Bringing your awareness, trying to, the first layer of union, You're trying to yoke your body and mind, movement and breath. Once you complete your Kati Chakrasan, let's come to your Majariyasan. Today, I, we will focus on back, so your spine. Right? A lot of people have back issues, back pain, any kind of back pain. Sometimes it comes from upper back, mid back, and lower back pains are very common, and sciatica. So if, if, you're any of, if you have any of those issues, or maybe time to time you have a little back aid from your exercise or from your movement. These sequence will be good for you. So today I will focus on the asana that are mainly for back issue. So will be a little different today. So we'll start with our Majariyasana also. Majariyasana, the most gentle way to wake up the spine. Inhale, lengthen, look up. Exhale, round the back chin to your chest. Pull your navel in. You can press your palms and the top of your foot deeply to the floor. And as you inhale, lengthening, looking up, chest open. As you exhale, round the back chin to chest. So movement with your breathing. Do this for three to five rounds. Ensure that your palms right underneath the shoulders, your knee right underneath the hip. And try to move all the vertebrae, all every disc of your spine in a nice way. There's no compression, you're in your prone position, so you can really experience the movement of the spine freely. And once you complete three to five rounds, We'll go Bhavatasana as usual. Bhavatasana is also a form of 
the compression of your spine if you really push your palms towards your tailbone. So tuck your toes, knees off the floor, fingers spread wide to protect your wrists so the whole palm should be on the floor. Push towards your tailbone. Your hip is up and back. So from your fingertips all the way to your tailbones, feeling the straight line, flat spine and stretching towards it. And if you're tight, you can bend your knee to, to really get this better stretch of your spine and your shoulders. And slowly straight your legs again without letting your spine round. Try to stay here. You can adjust the distance between your palms and feet. Your waist should be distributing evenly on all four, your both feet and both palms. So really align your postures here. Take your time, no rush. We wanna slow down when we practice our asana. We wanna bring awareness to it. Just stay here for three to five long breathing. Feeling warm, welcome the energy of warmthness. Long inhaling, long exhaling. Once you have completed three to five long deep breath in your Pavadhasana, rest your knees back down, your, sit on your heels, come to Balasana and rest. Now in Balasana, you have no more tension, no more muscle strengthening part, just relax. And stay there for three to five long breathing. In Balasan, your spine, your lumbar spine is resetting. So favor the weight onto your heels. If you're not touching, it's okay. Let it sit on it so that your spine can actually reset. Let it drop, no tension on your toes. Relax your toes, hip on the heels, yes. Entire body, try to feel the gravity like you're a pile of fabric on the floor, let the whole body and muscles drop on the gravity. And now with your inhale, come back, come back to your Madhariyasa. Now today, since we're spine focused, let's go to our cat balance pose, which is, which give you the stability of your core and also testing your pelvis alignment. If your pelvis alignment and consciousness is not there, you will not be able to do this kind of balance and you maybe you will be wobbly too much. Let's practice. First, right leg, straight and strong. Try to find the straight line. And if you're feeling that horizontal line, your heels and your hip lever the same at, at the same level, you can add your left arms forward. Now fingertips to heels, straight line, breathe deeply. And exhale, maybe to bring your elbow and knee touch. And inhale, lengthen straight again. Find that horizontal line. And exhale, knee, elbow, touch. And inhale, and then. And exhale, lower down. Other side. Left leg, straight. Don't let your body twist or turn or shift the weight entirely on the right side as you lift your left leg. Now, if you're feeling stable, reach out your right arms forward, breathe deeply. Dear devotees, keep your mind in here at he compose. 
Exhalation. Now you can try to reach elbow and knees touch. And inhale again, find the horizontal line. Straight. Neck relax. Exhale again, touch. Inhale. Lengthen, reach forward. Find that great stability in, in this motion. And exhale again, try to find elbows and knee touch. And inhale, lengthen. Simple yet, it's not that easy. We feel too much wobbly. Then practice stronger, a little longer, and relax. Sit on your heel, come to Balasan. Let, let your shoulder rest. Long inhale. Long exhale. Inhale, when you're ready, gradually come back to your Majari Asan. Now from here, we will do our vinyasa because vinyasa give us a lot of conscious in our spine and it let us move the spine. It let the spine move like a weight. So exhale for vinyasa. Let's start with our Bhavatasan. Exhale. Inhale, Felikasan. Body straight line. If you have wrist and shoulder injury, you have definitely be careful here. You might have to drop your knees down or modify it. Otherwise, stay strong. Use not only your upper body strain, also your core strain. A few deep breaths here. And as you exhale, now lower down your knee. This is the tricky part. Protect your wrist and elbow Do not uh, and shoulder. So your elbow bend towards the rib cage. Very slowly drop your chest and chin down. Ashtanga Namaskar. Your butt up is up. So your hip is up. Ashtanga Namaskar. Chin down. And inhale forward. And curl your toes. Make all these adjustments. Little adjustments are great for your ankle flexibility in the future and also more agility in there in your all your joints now bhujangasan since we're focusing on the spine and for those who have back issue these asanas are golden but you have to do it right so inhale chest and chin forward and up hug your elbow in now no weight on the palms check if you take off your palms, your spine should stay as it is. Now keep your palms down. And if you want to help with your palms, only maybe 10%. More of your length in the spine. Now shoulder should not shrink. Shoulder away from the ears. No neck tension, neck should not pinch. So relax the neck, go more spine. This is the correct Bhujangasana. And from here, you can, of course, progress with your flexibility. Now, exhale, push all the, go, come back down and push all the way back to your Bhavatasana. This is our Vinyasa. Now, a few more round. Let's practice the smoothness of this sequence. So inhale, Falakasan. Go detail. Even though you have done this many times before, refine your pose this time. Exhale, knee chest and down. Inhale, forward and up. Jangasan. Exhale. All the way back to your Bhavatasan. Right, this foundation of flow, this sequence is called vinyasa.
two to three more rounds on your own to let your spine warm. If you have the injury, spine injury, do be careful and take precaution not to overly stretch. Now, once you're done with your vinyasa again, rest in your balasan. Reset. Don in he, irati. Don exhale. Now from here, reach your arms forward, lengthen, just staying from, from, just from your balasana, from your child pose. Exhale, walk your, both the palms towards your right side, forward and to the right. Feel the stretch on the side. Feel the stretch on the left side of your torso, ribcage, and the arms, waist. Belly, stay close to the thigh, breathe deeply. Now we're starting those lateral stretch. Inhale, walk your hands back forward. Exhale, walk both the hands forward and to your left. Feel the stretch on your right side. Maybe starting from the whole underarms, rib cage, torso, waist. Keep your belly close to the thigh, maybe on the thigh. Keep breathing. Keep reaching forward so your arms straight, making effort to stone up, stretch the side. Inhale, slowly come back forward. Great, inhale, come back. Now, Majariyasan. Another golden pose for back issue that we treat with Kapotasana. So let's go. It's known for sciatica issue. So if you don't have any knee injury, you can do Kapotasana as it is from prone asana instead of supine. So let's go step by step. If you're new to this knee, for a long time practitioner, you could go from Pavatasana to drop down directly. Otherwise, right knee to the right wrist and your right toes to come out to the left side as high as possible according to your hip flexibility. And you drop your hip down by stretching your left leg as far as possible towards the back as if somebody pulling your left leg from behind, your left knee far away from your body towards the back. And inhale, lengthen. You can stay here, exhale, you can go towards sleeping, kapotasa more prone, you can drop your elbow down, belly towards your calf, maybe drop your forehead down. Do not let your spine or pelvic twist towards the, don't, don't let yourself twist or Pelvis uh, moved, keep your belly button, pelvis straight, belly button facing forward, facing down towards the floor. And stay here, three to five, long breathing. A nice emphasis stretch should be on your right side of your hip, outer hip, your gluteus media maxima and the piriformis muscles. Staying there, breathe deeply. If you don't feel anything, you have to pull your right foot slightly up higher. Right toes has to come higher towards your left elbow, left hands. Inhale, when you're ready, slowly come back. Rise up your upper body, the palm right next to your chest, tuck your toes and slowly come back to your Majariyasana. If you had came from Pavatasana, go back to Pavatasana. 
And then transition your left, now left knee to the left wrist. Take out your left toes out to the right side, according to your hip flexibility, however far you can. You should not feel in your, in your knee joints. Now, let right leg stretch back as if somebody pulling you from the back. Inhale, lengthen. Keep your core engaged to protect your lower back. Don't let your lower back pinch in this position. Try to make more flexibility on your hip flexor. And exhale, maybe elbow down. Maybe forehead down. Stretch out your arms forward and stay there. Let's see. Long inhale. Belly to your floor and chest to the calf. Hands stretch out forward, nice. Your right leg straight towards the back. Breathe deeply. Meditate on where you feel it. Try to focus on there and don't let your mind drift away. Or you can inhale at he, exhale. Keep your mind in the practice. And with your inhale, slowly, gently coming back. Rise up your upper body to come, to come back from the pose. Push the palms, tuck your toes and push yourself up back to your Manjariyasana. Great. So now we will continue with our prone ascent. So a lot of back issue. Uh, so if you sit and stand, compression is there. So the practice is more of a prone of prone and supine, you will see, for those back issues. So let's go to prone now. Lie on your stomach. First, just relax. Take out your tension away from the spine. You can bend your knee, move slightly side to side, breathe deeply. We have three foundation poses that we practice for our prone asana or back bending. They are all great and beneficial for maintaining the strength of your back. Let's practice them. Place your palms underneath your thigh, palm facing up, chin or your forehead down. Inhale. Your right leg up, more lengthening your toes and heel towards the back of the wall than the lifting. So try to stretch more than lifting. And you can, without bending your knee, play your ankles. Flex, point, flex, point, flex, point. Five to ten rounds, play your ankle, ensuring that you are lengthening the legs straight, pulling from the root of the thigh, decompressing, and lower down, left leg, lengthen and up, chin or your forehead down. And flex and point, flex and point. Let's see. Five to 10 round flex and point. Keep your other leg straight, the top of your foot down on the other legs, knee straight. No bending knees, just the ankle movement. And lower down. Great. 
Now, very carefully, if you already have pre-existing back issue, you have to focus on lengthening. You don't even have to lift if you're in your severe condition. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, you can lift if you don't have it. But they are really nice to decompress your lumbar spine. So from here, both the legs lengthen. Now, if you have strong back, lengthen and up. Keep breathing, stay here for three to five. Long breathing, shallow breaths. Make the effort to stretch your legs long towards the back of the wall so that your front thigh come up. Nice. Chin on your forehead down. Keep your neck and shoulder relaxed. Breathe deeply. And lower down. Take a little rest. You can turn your head to one side. Rest long in here. Long exhale. Now let's take care of the upper part of the spine as well. Now come to your elbow. Your elbow should be directly underneath the shoulders. Palms is down. Top of your foot down. This will be a very gentle way of back bending your upper back bending, long inhale, long exhale. Now from here, press the elbow and palms to the floor, lift the chest up high, stretch to the crown of your head. Also lengthen the leg straight. So just a little bit of action. Now your body is totally different, more strength version and if you feel a little more you can do you can press the palms to the floor and very slowly elbow can come off the floor maybe one inch maybe two inch without shrinking your shoulders shoulders should be down away from the ears rise up from the chest the arch should be evenly and healthy arch of your spine. Keep breathing. If you want to add your jaw, throat, chest, lift the chin up. And exhale slowly, lower down. Nice way to take care of your upper back. And do your second time, second round. Well, let's see. Let's monitor you. So again, elbow directly underneath the shoulders. First, press your elbow and palms to rise up your chest towards the crown of your head. Your legs are straight. Once you're ready, elbow off the floor and lengthen more chest and chin high. Shoulder down, breathe deeply. And stay if you can here, three to five long breathing. Breathe into the spine. Breathe out from the spine, shoulder down, chest high. Yes, lift your chest higher. If you have more flexibility, rise up slightly more. Keep your top of your foot down on the floor. Nice, should be feeling a very healthy, good stretch on the spine with a little bit of progress feeling also. Slowly lower down when you're ready and rest.
can turn your head to one side, hands on the side, completely rest. On inhaling. On exhaling. Now for your back to be strong, normally we do Danurasan and Sarpasan if you're healthy. But if you have an issue or in pain, you do this, only these two with precaution and with very correct alignment. And flip over to your supine position. So we will move on to look at other asanas that are really beneficial and to keep, your, to keep our spine very healthy and to treat the spine in a very gentle way. So even if you have a healthy spine, it's great to practice these asana with tremendous awareness to help you with your foundation. Each asana have to be in line. Otherwise, when we rush into it, these asana could be also um, harmful. So now, from supine asan, palms down, like right next to your body. Lift your, sorry, lift your right leg up. Flex and point your toes. And lower down. Inhale up. Flex and point your toes, your ankle. And lower down, inhale up, flex and point, lower down. And you can do this five to 10 round. This is warming up nicely for your lower abdominal region and around your pelvis region, the strength of your hip flexor with the awareness of lengthening. So as you move the ankles, lengthen your feet up to the ceiling. Lower down, five to 10. Even if you do it slow, nice and tight, you will feel the nice burning of the muscle, the necessary muscle that we are working on. So give your best, point and flex and down. Now circle also up, circle your ankles. The other side. Keep your left leg straight down and lower down. Do the same with your left leg, left leg up, flex and point, flex and point and down and up, flex and point and down. Do it five to 10 rounds with awareness, really reaching your feet up to the ceiling, straight. Put some effort to it. Use all these muscles. Starting from the hip joint, lengthening towards your toes. And circle also. Circle your ankle, other side. And lower down, great. So this is also a gentle way to check your back and also to strengthen your core and your hip flexor. A lot to do with hamstring and hip flexor when you get the spine uh, issues. So now next one, strength, pose, Kandarasan. Gentle back bend as well. So bend your knee, toes, knees straight, palms on the floor, inhale, start gently press the lower back to the floor and lift your hip off the floor. So gent gently, you're, you're just very slight movement of tucking your pelvis and lift after the tuck. Push your hip up high if possible and 
go ahead and adjust the shoulder also. If you have a healthy spine, if you can go up higher, go ahead. Otherwise, halfway is fine. Just a tuck is also fine according to your spine. If you can stay three to five long breathing, go ahead and lower back down after the first round. Do this for three to five rounds. This give you the strength in your hamstring, glute and lower back. So let's see, make sure you relax your shoulders, chest, neck. So let your chest come to your chin as you lift your torso and hip up high. So when you go these details, you can really feel these muscles. You have opportunity to hold it a little longer. You have opportunity to check your toes and knees straight. Sometimes normally our knees go wide and it doesn't stay straight with the toe. Sometimes the toe itself is not straight, so you turn it completely straight and lift your hip up high. Yes. Nice. Toe straight. Toe straight. Keep breathing. So most of us, naturally, if our hip is tight, we have a penguin toe. Straight your toes. Okay, down. Yes. Nice. So make sure you are pressing the inner edge of your foot also. Sometimes our inner edge of the foot come off the floor as we, as we lift. So press the inner edge of the toes back really deeply. So that, that awareness will create that sensation on your lumbar spine. You are strengthening it, strengthening it healthily. And lower down. Once your practice is done, take a little rest. You can hold it to three to five long deep breath each. You can do three to five rounds. Now, nice circulation is, has gone into your lumbar spine. Now we can stretch. So hug your right knee to your chest. Hug your shin. Left leg can stretch out straight. Adha Pavana Muktasan. Inhale, exhale. If, you're, if you don't have any neck issue, to also strengthen your neck and complete the pose. Nose to knee, knee to nose with your exhale. Keep breathing there. And slowly let go, relax. Other side your left leg, hug your shin, inhale, adhi. exhale, nose to knee, knee to nose, try to reach, Stay for three to five long breathing and release. And both sides together. Inhale, ati. Bring your knees to your chest. Exhale, hug nose to knee, knee to nose. Yes, hug it tight and nice and tight. And release after three to five long breathing. Take a little rest. Take a long deep breath in. And long exhale. You can take Shavasan, another back pain treatment, well-known and also 
been effective for so many of the back pain uh, issue is that subtle body relaxation, yoga nidra practice. So now we will take a very short version of that before our pranayama practice to conclude. So go ahead and bring your feet apart about one feet or one feet and a half apart. Your palm facing up, hands away from your body, six to eight inch. Check your shoulder and make sure your shoulder is relaxed and down away from the ears, not shrinking up. Keep your neck straight and slightly tuck your chin down and then relax it. You're giving more space to that cervical spine, cervical region. Now with that completely relax. Drop your body onto the gravity as if it's everything is no more, it's taken care of already, complete. So feel that heaviness of the body on the floor. as you drop the body. Take a long deep breath in. Rati. Exhale. Shang. Now feel the lightness of the body as if you breathe in. Let your body melt onto the floor. All your muscles are very relaxed. So you're feeling like your body is melt onto the floor. So feeling light, exhale and let go. For those of you long time practitioner, you can meditate now. You can meditate on the image or form of divine. If you're just starting and if your mind's still drifting away if your body is still not relaxing or able to let go, you can do your body scanning.
since we are working on spine today. As you breathe in, breathe into your spine. As you breathe out, for those who have back issue, breathe out from that region. Let go all the pain. Feel the process of healing in the breath by itself. If your spine started feeling tense and not able to relax because of the arch, you can also keep your knees slightly bent, legs apart, knees together. Now take a long deep breath in. Long inhalation, welcoming all the good prana, your, bring oxygen into your system, send it to every cells in your body. Long exhale, let go. Take another long deep breath in, energize your body, cells. Long exhale, let go. Now move your fingers and toes gently. Feel awareness back, feel bring your awareness back to your surrounding. Inhale, stretch your arms up and lengthen. You're still lying down and stretch. Stretch nicely. Bring your feet together and lengthen as if you want to get tall body. Lengthen from arms and legs. And relax. Turn over sideways. You can turn to one side and take the best Comfortable side sleeping position and stay there for a moment. In settle body relaxation, if your system very tired, you fall asleep, you go into the deep sleep or dream state, stay, that's okay. Slowly you, once your energy is tuned up, you will be able to have that quality Yoga Nidra. Take a moment, feeling peaceful, calm energy. You can slowly sit up when you're ready. Sit up tall in your Sukhasan or your other Siddhasan. You can have the blanket support. You can sit on the blanket. Sit comfortably. Continue a meditation in seated, seated position for a few minutes to conclude the practice. Back straight, neck straight, eyes closed. You may also conclude your practice with Anulong Vilong Pranayam. If the sitting is not comfortable for you because of your back, you can sit different way or you can release the back again. You can lie down again. Up to you, be aware of your body. For those who are comfortably sitting, you can also do Anulong Vilong Pranayam or you can simply sit and meditate.
for those who are not familiar with anulong vilong pranaya full yoga breathing for those who are familiar with the pranayam you can do so if you want to learn these pranayam techniques you can check out our brain yoga class that we host daily and workshop monthly workshop to teach step by step for all these pranayam techniques Once you complete, you can conclude the practice. Relax your arms, normal breathing. Wrap your palms together. Make your own palms. Your own palms go, cup it on your eyes. Let your eyes absorb this nice warm energy for your eyes to energize. And with a few play, open your eyes. <coughs> oh. Sakuru Shri Maharajuki Jai 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 Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Namaste. Thank you all. With this uh, yoga knowledge, I hope you take care of your back, your spine, all the way till the end. Healthy spine, healthy mind. Namaste. Thank you. 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 Thank you.